Hi, my name is Tanel Puder. Let's talk about Linux trade uh, uh, state tracking, not trace. So uh, every system provides utilization metrics, which is like the supply side. Uh, but I also want to see the full system activity from the demand side. And the demand is basically active threads doing stuff for you. Um, so, and I want to be able to drill down into individ individual threads, uh, like a log writer in a, in a data database. So can we do, do all of this without having to trace everything uh, all the time? And yes. So I wrote a little tool set a long time ago, actually 2018 or something. Um, but it blew up after I published a uh, proof of concept prototype with BCC. And uh, I'll start from a my old tool just to show you the concept and then let's talk about eBPF. So my old tool process snapper just samples what proc files, whatever Linux kernel provides, uh, I can sample. Um, and you know, I'll show you like a top activity. An activity is the time wall clock time your threads spent doing something. It's not CPU utilization, it's not IO latency, whatever. It's the wall clock time of every thread of interest in your system, right? And whatever pops up near the top is, is what takes most of the time. So you could take, think about of this data as like a fact table in a data warehouse. So this is really a count star of samples. I can derive how many threads on average were actually doing stuff then over over the last five seconds or whatnot. And these are the uh, dimension columns. It's essentially, essentially these are the columns you do a group by, by in, in the database uh, world, right? And that allows you to look into the data from any angle um, of interest. Of course, here I'm limited with the proc file system only. With EPVF, you're not really limited by almost anything, you know, because you can program and access any, any data you want both in the kernel space and user land apps space with U probes and then the USDTs and stuff like that. And that leads me to, the, to a little front-end tool, what I wrote uh, for the whole whole method and then the EB, EBPF-based uh, data source. So I called it desktop. And, uh, you know, it's kind of, kind of the same. You see, most of the uh, wall block time has been spent by MySQL threads doing F-Sync system call. And uh, by the way, these guys are, have not been on, on the CPU, uh, or at least that state is not, right? They are off CPU with this stack trace ID associated with this particular off CPU event. Um, so, and uh, you know, to show this, for example, there is some MySQL application connection thread which is doing an F data sync, also not on CPU, sleeping, waiting for something. And I have highlighted the, some of the stack IDs. And when you run this tool in command line, you know you'll you'll just see uh, you know an extra section. You see here we go. Uh, so that stack ID is uh, you know you read it from here. Somebody ran the commit. That commit resulted in in, in a bin, bin log sync, and that resulted later on in an F data sync. And uh, so how does this thing work or the concept? So. I mean, Linux has a, has a task state array. You know, every trade you create will ha have to allocate the slot somewhere. And the slot has all kinds of metadata about the scheduler state and so on, right? And so uh, for now, I have created like a shadow array. That's the extended part, or, or really this is the extended part. And the shadow array is, is basically which contains all the extended extra custom metadata about what your trade is really doing. And not only in the Linux kernel scheduler le level, level, but also in the application level. Like what system call is it in? You know, what stack traces are, you know, are associated by when it goes to sleep or blocks and so on. That's only half of the story. So, so this um, extended task state array with all your custom extra context of interest, this is kind of between these two decoupled layers, right? Um, so the eBPF programs that are attached to probes and you know trace points and so on, these are the ones which maintain this extra metadata for you. Um, and then there is a separate layer that samples that metadata. So if you think about it like that, you know you have a you know you have a trait that it's on uh, let's say it's on CPU in user space and then it goes to, goes to sleep for some reason. Um, 
every time it, the state changes like that, um, you know, perhaps this is uh, still on CPU, but in kernel mode, not user mode. Um, every time the, uh, the thread state changes, we will update the extra extended, uh, you know, areas of the task state array with, with the latest state only. We're, we are overriding the state, as you see. You see, there is, um, you know, somebody running so many, many system calls per second. Uh, we are not somehow logging every system call into a trace that will be tracing, but we're just keeping the latest, you know, current state, um, additional state in, uh, in this array. So, and that's where the second half comes into play. Uh, you can choose to sample this now. So this state, which always is up to date, up to date with your all the extra context you want, you can sample this. You know, by default, I sample once per second. Um, and you know, first second you get this output. Second, next second, next, you get this right. And you may have fifty thousand threads in your uh, system, but you don't have to emit fifty thousand threads information every single time because uh, you know you can define that hey. The only interesting threads are the ones that are on CPU, trying to be on CPU, or are you know sleeping in the D state, right? And perhaps you know you can define whatever rules you want. So and that's what the, what tracking means, not tracing. You you we we still get a reasonable overview of the entire system demand, you know, not only utilization but demand, but also you can zoom into a specific uh, thread only if you want to, right? And uh, you can have this always uh, on uh, mode as well. And uh, it, it will create you a trades file for every hour for now, the active trades or the trades of interest. Um, and uh, for stack traces, it creates a separate file. So if you want to go back in time to see what was going on at some point of time, then you can, uh, you know, you maybe see that, hey, uh, a lot of trades were waiting in this uh, off CPU user mode stack. Right, and now you go to the stacks file. You just grab for that, and uh, you'll see you'll see what exactly what was going on. You know why did this thread go to sleep back then? And uh, there are awesome. I mean, I've only built like five percent of what I want to build, and there are some interesting things that might be possible. Like, uh, uh, for example, as uh, uh, hooking into the scheduler a switch trace point, and uh, and whenever let's say the user application wakes up the database connection in a local machine in this case we can keep track of that so you know this is not fully built out um but also th you know this is from the same situation right or same uh, time i just highlighted a different thing so there is this uh, mysql connection and apparently at some point it has woken up um you know the log flusher who did a f sync and it has woken up even an x4 file system journal writer and so on so you know you could uh, get kind of plot out um, uh, graphs once this thing is built properly. You know you can just see that if your if your commit is hung or the application is hung, you can maybe zoom, maybe follow the path all the way to you know commit to log flusher from log flusher to some sort of journal writer, and uh, you know if latencies grow up, go up or you ha even have a mini hang, this this would show up in here. But I just wanted to show you uh, you know that there's some opportunities what you get. Once you start looking into every single thread, but uh, but not trace every, everything, which would be like too expensive. Okay, there are a lot of things that can be done, and many of the things are already. I mean, they're possible anyway because it's eBPF, and many of the things what I mentioned here are already implemented by other tools, right? You know, like uh, extracting the distributed trace ID from the incoming requests. This could just become another column in the same extended task state array. Plenty of future plans. I want to build a V3 properly with modern lib BPF. So if you actually have extra time, if, if you know how to do modern lib BPF with all the things that I have in mind and you have extra time, then uh, please uh, help out uh, this open source project. And uh, that's all. So uh, try it out. Uh, make sure you give feedback. And uh, any questions are welcome, you know, just email me or, or get in touch uh, online. Thank you very much.